welcome to today's lecture this is one of the beginning in this unit 1 for milk and milk products this is specifically for the undergraduate students in veterinary college and it will be equally useful for undergraduates in dairy technology or other food technology courses so earlier we have discussed about the dairy development in india here we will discuss briefly about the composition and nutritive value of milk we will discuss different constituents and their composition or specific percentage values for different components and some of the nutritional aspect like protein fat minerals vitamins energy etc so let us understand what is milk the official definition of milk as per fsai that is the food safety and standards authority of india milk may be defined as whole fresh clean lactal secretion obtained by complete milking of one or more healthy milch animals excluding that obtained within 15 days before or 5 days after calving or such period as may be necessary to render the milk practically colostrum free and containing the minimum prescribed percentages of milk fat and milk solids not fat so this is the definition which says the it should be from the milk animal and the milk secretion which is coming before 15 days of calving or after 5 days of calving that is rich in colostrum that should not be considered as milk and it should fulfill the prescribed value of milk fat and solids uh, milk solids not fat which is given in the standard then there is another common term that is called market milk which is normally sold in the mar market as a packet nowadays so market milk refers to fluid whole milk that is sold to individuals usually for direct consumption it excludes milk consumed on the farm and that used for the manufacture of dairy products so normal liquid milk which is sold in the market that is going through pasteurization and in western practice it can be consumed directly because it is already heat treated but the milk which is used for making the dairy products that's not considered as market milk here we will try to understand the constituents of milk there are different kind of components in milk but roughly they are divided as water and the solids now the total solids are divided into two parts one is the fat or lipid portion another is non-fat portion which is called solids not fat or SNF so it is a very commonly used term in dairy that is the SNF now in the fat portion there is true fat which will be mostly the triglycerides and the other associated substances so in the other associated substances there are phospholipids which will have the phosphorus component with the lipid then cholesterol then carotene which is a pigment and the fat soluble vitamins like a d e k in the solids not fat the major component is lactose that is a milk sugar and then there is proteinaceous or nitrogenous substances in which there will be major protein and non-protein in the major protein is casein as we all know and the other minor proteins are lactalbumin and lactoglobulin which are normally present in whey and they are called as whey proteins and there are other non-protein substances like protease peptone then we have mineral matter which are mostly the potassium sodium calcium magnesium they are present in the form of phosphates or citrates or chlorides and very traces amount of ion copper and iodine the other constituents like pigments some dissolved gases vitamins like water soluble vitamins b complex and c and some enzymes and bacteria so this is an overall 
idea about the different constituents in meal. Next, we will see their proportion or in percentage. Here, we will see the very specific proportion in terms of percentage of different constituents in terms of cow milk. So, milk will have around solids 12.5 percent and water 87.5 percent in which the fat is 3.43 percent which will also have fat soluble vitamins. Then milk solids not fat which we call SNF that is around 8.57 percent. In this major is the protein that is 3.25 percent which contains casein 2.67 percent and whey protein around 0.58 percent. So casein is almost 80 percent of the total protein another 20 percent is the whey proteins. Then the another major component is the lactose which is 4.63 percent. Then there is minerals 0.69 percent and there are other water soluble vitamins. So this is the proportion or percentage of different components in milk in terms of cow milk. Here once again we will see the composition of cow milks. In the previous one we have mentioned the population average. Average from the, from the large number of cows milk collected and the average value or mostly the, as per the standards which we will see again. Here we can see a range. So in general we can say around 13% solid and 80s 7 to 88 percent water. So here we will see a normal range. The water contained may range from 82.4 to 90.7 and total solid can range between 9.3 to 17.6. Fat could range between 2.5 to 6. Proteins 2.7 to 4.8. Casein 2.3 to 4. It varies due to many reasons. Then whey proteins 0.4 to 0.8 percent, lactose 3.5 to 6 percent and minerals 0.6 to 0.8 percent. Here we will see the average composition of milk of different species. So it is in comparison with buffalo, cow, camel, goat, sheep and also human. So in the first column we can see the water content it is 83.5 in buffalo it's a very low whereas it is quite high in case of human that is 87.7. So human milk is more thin and watery whereas fat content we can we know that in buffalo it is quite high it is 6.6 percent whereas in sheep milk it is 8.6 percent but in general in cow milk it is up to 4 4.6 percent. Then protein content, it is expected to be around 3.5 or 3.4 in case of cow milk, but it is quite high in case of sheep, that is 6.7 percent, whereas in human it is very low, that is 1.8 percent. Then lactose, lactose is the milk sugar, it is quite high in buffalo, 5.2, in cow milk, 4.9. In camel also little higher side 5.6 but it is very high in case of human milk that is 6.8 that is the highest lactose content in human milk. Then the last column that is about the ash which contains the minerals this is again highest in case of sheep that is 1% otherwise also a little bit higher in goat and camel and buffalo also. In case of cow milk also it is expected to be around 0.7 to 0.8 whereas in case of human milk it is very low that is 0.1. So in human milk both protein and S is low whereas lactose is very high. Here is the standard for different class or category of milk. In case of cow milk, it should be 3.5% fat and 8.5% SNF. In case of buffalo milk, 5% fat and 9% SNF. In sheep and goat milk, 3% fat and 9% SNF. In case of standardized milk, 4.5% fat and 8.5% SNF. In case of combined milk, sorry, recombined milk, it is 3.5%. 3.0% milk fat and 8.5% SNF. In toned milk, 3.0% fat and 
8.5% is an app. In double tone milk, 1.5 is the fat and 9 is the SNF. And in skim milk, the fat should be less than 0 0.5 and SNF 8.7. So these are a specific standard for different category of milk as per FSSAI. Here we will see little bit more details about the protein, which I have already mentioned earlier. The major protein is the casein and the remaining is the whey. So casein protein makes 80% of the total protein and another almost 20% is whey. In the casein again there are different subcategory like alpha S1, alpha S2, then there is beta casein, again beta casein there are some, some other classifications so we will learn all these things more details in dairy chemistry later in separate lecture. In whey the two major is the alpha lactalbumin which is 4% and beta lactoglobulin which is 9% then there is blood serum albumin about 1% and immunoglobulins about 2% in addition there are certain uh, small peptones and proteoses so altogether it makes around 20% now enzymes so milk contains normally many enzymes like lipases that is breaking the lipid then alkaline phosphatase, then lactoperoxidase which is normally used for preservation of milk or it is used for testing the overpasteurization, then catalase, amylase and phosphatase. So this phosphatase again is used uh, for testing the pasteurization efficiency which we will discuss later. Then catalase is very important in normal milk it is very insignificant amount but an increased catalase content reflects an appreciable bacterial or leukocyte population and that indicates some kind of other infection. So here we will learn about some of the pigments present in milk. There are different kind of pigments. They are fat soluble and water soluble. In the fat soluble major is the carotene and next is the xanthophyll. So carotene Pigment gives the yellowish color of milk, mostly in case of cat, cow milk and other species except in buffalo. In case of buffalo, it is, it is in a different form, so the milk is white. And then there are water soluble pigments like lactoflavin and sometimes riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. This gives a greenish appearance mainly in whey. When it is in the milk it is not prominent because of the presence of carotene but when the uh, casein goes away during the curdling or uh, then only the whey we get there we can see the effect of riboflavin. So, so far we have seen different constituents or composition of milk. Here briefly we will discuss factors affecting milk composition. So this composition is highly variable due to many natural factors. This is again a very long topic. Maybe we will discuss separately in a lecture. Just briefly I want to mention this variation is due to species. So as you have seen earlier the cow milk and buffalo milk lot of variation or in sheep milk. Then the variation is due to age within the same species due to age that is the calving number of calving that makes lot of difference. Then seasonal variation in winter and in rainy season there is lot of difference maybe in rainy season due to the uh, more succulent uh, green grasses the composition varies whereas in winter the fat content increases protein and mineral content also increases. In case of another important variation is nutritional variation. So overfeeding will not change the milk composition but underfeeding or poor nutritional status will affect the composition particularly milk volume will decrease due to the poor nutrition and protein also and lactose also will reduce however fat content won't reduce or sometime it may be increased. Then due to the infection particularly in mammary gland that is called mastitis. So due to mastitis there may be decrease in fat, lactose and casein contents of milk while whey protein and chloride content will increase. So that makes a different reaction in case of milk obtained from mastitis.
now briefly we will discuss about nutritive value of milk as we all know milk is an ideal food sometimes it is called one of the best balanced diet single balanced diet or food it supplies bodybuilding proteins bone forming minerals especially very good source of calcium and phosphorus and it is very rich in many vitamins either fat soluble or water soluble vitamins energy giving sugar lactose is a source and milk fat also good source of energy and also the source of many essential fatty acids so milk contains most of these nutrients in the form of easily digestible and easily assimilable or absorbable form so it is an important food for expectant and lactating mothers growing children adolescents adults convalescents and old people or the patients for everybody milk is one of the very good balanced diet having lot of important useful nutrients which we are going to see little bit in more details here once again we can see the nutritive value of milk at a glance the protein it is available in highly biological value then fat it is having mostly saturated fat and some unsaturated fatty acids also only can permitic acid and the amounts depends on the type of milk generally low fat skimmed or full fat milk it will vary then carbohydrate it is having high level of milk sugar that is lactose then vitamins as we have seen already the fat soluble vitamins are quite rich that is a d and e k and then water soluble vitamins all b vitamins especially b1 thiamine b2 riboflavin niacin and milk is a very good source of b12 then minerals calcium is one of the very good source milk and then uh, potassium and phosphorus also present in good amount so these are some of the important nutritive uh, value of milk in brief here is again about the milk proteins that is major is the casein we have seen earlier and it is rich in all the essential amino acids and the others are the whey proteins which is obtained as a by product during processing of paneer cheese chana and uh, it goes with this whey which uh, contains the important proteins like alpha lactalbumin and beta lactoglobulin from which the whey proteins can be separately processed and used for many industrial or other human food processing so whey protein has got lot of special use there is a wide range of functional physiological and therapeutic properties are claimed from the whey proteins or products thereof an array of whey protein enriched foods can be formulated for special target groups such as cardiac risk group geriatrics diabetics and other phenylketonuria patients athletes infants and expectant mothers so different kind of special preparation are made from the whey proteins so for different benefits or different purpose whey proteins are marketed in three forms one is whey protein concentrate wpc which contains about 29 to 80% protein then there are whey protein isolate which is again higher than whey protein concentrate up to 80 to 90% protein and sometime we can make whey protein hydrolysate that is the protein is hydrolyzed by using enzymes controlled enzymatic hydrolysis for easy assimilation and hypoallergenicity so some people cannot digest and absorb easily the whey protein in that case it is hydrolyzed for easy digestion and assimilation for some special cases or patients now nutritional value of milk fat in milk fat is very important and it is specifically used for making butter and ghee so it is a major source of energy high, highly rich source and it is the source of essential fatty acids like linoleic linolenic and arachidonic so we will discuss more details in about the milk chemistry about the milk fat and protein later in separate lecture 
and in case of milk it plays a very important role as for giving the flavor either in milk or in the milk products and it pro provides a softy body and smooth texture and rich taste to different dairy products so milk fat is very important nutritional point of view now about lactose lactose is the milk sugar it is very unique in nature only present in milk and it is a disaccharide it is a, a, a source of energy and important food especially for babies and it aids in calcium and phosphorus absorption thus forming better bones and teeth and reduces the requirement of vitamin d lactose also helps to establish a slightly acidic reaction in intestine and thereby it helps in checking the growth of proteolytic bacteria and facilitates absorption here we will see the energy value in cow and buffalo milk in cow milk it is about 75 kilo calorie per 100 gram whereas in buffalo 100 kilo calorie per 100 gram this is due to the higher fat percent in buffalo milk as we all know the energy value for different constituents like in case of milk fat 9.3 calorie per gram and milk protein 4.1 calorie per gram and milk sugar 4.1 calorie per gram so the buffalo milk gives a more energy due to higher fat content now about minerals so as we have seen earlier that is uh, together it is called as as which is around 0.72.8 percent in general so all minerals are found in milk which are essential for nutrition especially milk is an excellent source of calcium and also for phosphorus and potassium which along with vitamin d are essential for bone formation milk is little bit less in copper and iron now about the vitamins which we have already discussed it's a very good source of fat soluble vitamins that is a d e and k which is present in milk fat and also a good source of b vitamins especially thiamine riboflavin even b12 and most of the b complex vitamins however the milk is a poor source or it is deficient in vitamin c so finally here is a comparison between cow milk and the human milk as we have seen earlier also energy value is almost similar protein is comparatively very less in human milk than the cow milk 1 to 1.5 whereas in cow 3.3% then carbohydrate or lactose it is very high in case of human milk that is 6.5 to 7 whereas in cow milk it will be up to 4 or 4.5% fat is almost similar but it is high in long chain fatty acid in case of human milk whereas in cow milk it is high in medium chain fatty acid minerals if we see actually in the right side table the calcium is much higher in case of cow milk even the phosphorus is also much higher in case of cow milk then vitamins almost similar but it in case of human it depends on the diet digestibility in case of human meal human milk it is more easily digested and other uh, things like other things are almost similar the vitamins are almost similar so now we are at the end of today's lecture so briefly i will summarize we have discussed about the composition and nutritive value of milk so we have seen the different constituents and they are quantity wise percentage wise different components like protein fat sugar vitamins minerals and little bit details about different kind of proteins and different kind of lipids different kind of fats vitamins so nutritive value energy value and we have seen a, a comparison between species like cow and buffalo milk or sheep and goat milk and we have seen also the differences or comparison the of cow milk and the human milk so this is a very brief lecture to have an idea at the beginning about the milk and its constituents and different components and their percentage so some of these thing we will be learning in more details in separately in other lectures thank you